good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Alberto Vanisian, Armenians and Armenian, Artsakh children were deprived of warm housing, necessary food, full exercise of the right to education. Encouraging Baku's bellicose policy is not the best way to make positive developments in the peaceful settlement of the conflict. Artsakh Foreign Ministry, Artsakh Ombudsman, we call on UNICEF to take action in face of existential threats looming over Artsakh children. The Road to Heaven, Raymond Berberian, Forgotten Kingdom, Verin Naver Exhibition, results of 50 years of excavations. Alberto Vanisian was born on September 15, 2001. In 2006 to 2012, he attended the Arab Gear Sports School and practiced Dukendo Karate. He obtained black and red belts. In the years 2007 to 2012, he studied at Yerevan Elementary School No. 59, named after Hago Paronian. In 2012 to 2015, he studied at the Kvant School. In 2015 to 2016, he studied at Leo Tolstoy School No. 128. In 2016 to 2018 at Heratsi High School. In 2018, alongside high school, he studied in the Armenian Russian University preparatory course. In 2019, he was admitted to the Faculty of Political Science at the same university. He was conscripted into the Armenian Army on January 13, 2020. He was a junior sergeant. Albert's father, Artako Vanisian, says his son served in Jirakan. He got two medals. He didn't think anything could bother him during service. He he would always say that stay calm we are definitely going to win says the hero's father according to him albert together with the guys under his command fought relentlessly against azerbaijani soldiers and mercenary terrorists for three days and nights i managed to get in touch with my son's commander who said your son is a real hero according to him albert had inflicted serious damage on the enemy Having been formed in certain ethnic environment with the need to meet certain requirements, the carpet underwent various movements and interactions within given ethnic unit over the millennia and received new practical domains. The carpet was not simply a domestic object but from the outset had a ritual significance and this is also the reason for the carpet's importance in the Armenian cultural heritage system. For centuries, the carpet has been a cultural phenomenon representing the national image and profile, an exclusive historical and cultural value. Some carpets have a whole history and meaning behind their designs. There is a hidden memory in the patterns and a very often is the patterns that tell the story rather than the people. Carpets were also thought to have healing properties, not only because they were woven from natural wool and the yarns were dyed with natural dyes, but because it was believed that there was a special secret hidden behind their patterns. The oldest or sickest member of the household was always in the corner of the house where the rug hung. The rug hung on the wall and spread out on the floor were also different. Rugs with special ornaments were hung on the wall and on them hung photos of deceased relatives, musical instruments and other sacred objects. The carpet spread out on the floor while having unique ornaments had no particular meaning or ancestral symbols. Artur Tovmaisian, Chairman of National Assembly of the Republic of Artsakh, sent a congratulatory message on the occasion of the Children's Rights Day. My dear little friends, I warmly congratulate you on the most glorious holiday, the International Children's Rights Day. Today you meet in indescribably hard conditions. Your motherland is under threat. The adults' worries are willy-nilly transmitted to you. Being under blockade, you are deprived of elementary rights, comfortable housing, the food you need, the full exercise of the right to educate education. Along with the sadness of it all, in your little eyes is the spirit of struggle, the will and desire to live in your homeland, the burden of its realization resting on the shoulders of adults. I assure you, you will do everything in our power to ensure your carefree childhood and to preserve your homeland at all costs. You are our future, the bright future of Artsakh. May God's hand protect you. The statement made by an official of the U.S. State Department on May 30, welcoming recent statements by the Baku authorities about their willingness to consider the so-called amnesty for the residents of Artsakh, is deeply disappointing and perplexing. It is hard to explain how anything positive and commendable could have been found on the statement of the Baku authorities based on outright blackmail and coercion. It is obvious that the main message of the statement by the Baku authorities was to refuse an equal dialogue with the democratically elected authorities 
authorities of the Republic of Artsakh and to strive to impose their power on the people of Artsakh by force. We have no doubt that the U.S. intends to play a positive role in achieving a fair, balanced and dignified settlement of the Azerbaijani Karabakh conflict and establishing a durable peace in the region. At the same time, we believe that encouraging Baku's destructive and bellicose policy is not the best way to make positive developments in the peaceful settlement of the conflict. The government of Western Armenia has repeatedly referred to such a statement of the European Union. Geram Stepanyan, HRD of the Republic of Artsakh, published a post on his Facebook page from which we present excerpts. On this International Children's Day, it is imperative to speak out again about the challenges and deprivations faced by 30,000 children in Artsakh today, following the six months blockade by the Baku authorities. According to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, all children in the world have fundamental and inalienable rights, but for approximately six months, the children of Artsakh continue to be deprived of their basic and fundamental rights and freedoms, such as education, health care, development, family reunification, psychological and mental integrity, and adequate standard of living and access to basic necessities. Due to the blocking of the Berzo Road by the Baku authorities, some 550 children have been deprived of the right to return home and be reunited with their families. In all, more than 1,820 children were unable to see one or both parents because of the blockade, causing severe psychological distress among the children. In the absence of sufficient and timely food supplies in Artsakh, children, including infants, face a serious threat of malnutrition, lack of victims and minerals, and resulting health problems. Children's rights are human rights and should be universal. Regardless of a child's origin or ethnicity, the children of Artsakh should enjoy the same rights and opportunities as all the children of the world. However, in the 21st century, as the civilized world pursues sustainable development goals, the children of Artsakh are still fighting for the protection of their fundamental rights and the provision of opportunities. Under conditions of existential threats against the children of Artsakh, we once again call on the international community, represented by UNICEF, to take action to effectively protect the rights of our children and prevent threats from the authoritarian and hateful regime to Armenia authorities in Baku every day. I have just learned about the sad consequences of the war unleashed between Armenia and the Turks of Turkey, the Azerbaijani brothers and the interested collaboration of the pretty girl. Approximately 6,000 Armenian soldiers were killed. To me, it was not just a war, it was a political catastrophe, a grave failure of our intelligence and an overconfidence of those in power. We, the Armenians of the diaspora, the Westerners are not obvious to what is happening in our land. We are not just here to help it financially and decorate it as a sanctuary. We suffer with it and we get bad seeing it stumble into misunderstandings and instability. It seems to me that the masters of Armenia accept us as brothers from the mouth out for fear of being displaced. I am sure that if they had come to us before making that tragic determination, if they had consulted us about the fate of Artsakh, warned about the danger posed by Azerbaijan's treacherous attempt to seize her, perhaps and I say perhaps we would have found the solution and the 6,000 dead hopes and their relatives would not be lamenting as it that moment so difficult for them as for us. Perhaps we lack convincing and mentalizing that our union under a single hope would lead us to our final goal. We operate as a parallel Armenia in exile and we have millions of brothers scattered throughout the world and so many other sympathizers were about to convince the involved nations to contemplate our demands and claims. Once our goal has been reached, it will be time to engage in conversation with the masters of free and independent Armenia to polish our mistakes and rough edges and embrace each other. Then we will have won the battle of the resurrection. We are Armenians, talented, awake people, but wasted for not being able to guess where our truth lies. For some time now, Armenia and the diaspora have been shipwrecked among shuffled truths without being able to hit the one that would grant us the peace of perpetuity. Turkey is favored by our economic and social divorce between the two Armenians, thereby gaining time enjoying our inheritances within its reach, have clear ideas, recovering the lost ship, gaining support supporters among progressive nations and consolidating a goal in which the waiters intertwined would put us back on our feet, otherwise we would not reach Rome and we will continue sailing as before in the vacuum of a tightrope. Armenia is not alone. Embraced by the diaspora and assimilated, it will never again fall into a Turkish ambush. Respectfully, Raymond Ruben Berberian. 
During excavations in the ancient Verin Naver settlement at the foot of Aragaz, the expedition headed by archaeologist Jacob Simonian found numerous testimonies of spiritual and secular power, luxury items made of precious metals and stones, symbols of power such as weapons, cells, feathers, and medallions with portraits. Interesting findings have been documented in the book Forgotten Kingdom, Verin Naver, as reported by Armen Press. The book was inaugurated at the Armenian History Museum, according to Jacob Simonian. The excavations at Veri Naver started in 1976 with the main emphasis on Late Bronze Age, tombs containing symbols of royalty. This is the period when Armenia already had established states. During the excavations, we found the tombs of chiefs, of kings and high priests. As a result of excavations, we have received a huge amount of information about the society, social structure, international relations, crafts, trade, military forces living at that time in Ararat Valley. The medallions included in the exhibition are exclusive. Jacob Simonian assures that similar medallions can be found in the Lower British Museum and in Elam. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs>